So what's up, fellow journeyers? So we stayed last night in the RV they keep sort of as their guest house with some of our patrons. The truck is still stranded at Chili's 30, 40 minutes from here. We could not get that fixed at 8.30 on a Friday night. We're gonna get the tire fixed this morning. But the other snag we're running into is we really need to get to where this RV is and inspect it and finish the payment before noon because it's a Saturday. And so our patrons are gonna drive us. <laughs> it's a long, they're awesome people because it's still, like I said, two and a half, three hours from here even. We're gonna drive the rest of the way, get to where the RV's at. Marissa's gonna stay back, get the truck fixed. As soon as that's fixed, meet me, finish up the buying process, which hopefully is going well. Um, and then we're gonna drive back with our RV. So, what could go wrong? See you, babe. thankful for this bed last night it was so nice having a bed to sleep in and not having to sleep in the truck <laughs> um i'm excited for today i'm nervous nathan's already left and we'll see what the day holds pulling up to the camper here in a few minutes um i always have nerves doing this so this is obviously not my truck i'm actually not even driving if you're wondering what's going on um here, here is stewart so stewart's uh <laughs> Him and Lindsay are the ones that honestly just saved us last night, pretty much. Let us stay in their camper, bringing us out here, helped hook us up with somebody to help with the tire, like like literally, just like like saved us. So, and not only that, he's way more proficient as far as like the underbelly, the suspension, probably a lot of stuff I know little to nothing about, uh, when obviously with what I did with my truck, pretty obvious. It never hurts to have somebody with you when you go make these purchases, so that if, it does end up being a terrible deal or maybe you're just exhausted and you're like, I'm just gonna buy this, you know, <laughs> like which could totally happen because we're, you know, still exhausted from yesterday. But you know, it doesn't hurt to have a second set of eyes, a second set of ears. But even if you just FaceTime somebody and have somebody walk around with you. We're pretty much here. So I bet you guys are ready to see this thing. So I'm still trying to calm down a little bit. You guys will notice if we did not walk to the RV, show you the RV inspect the RV together any of that stuff um, I, we did an initial walk around uh, without the camera and all that because we don't want the sellers to be uncomfortable or anything while we're doing that it was just not what it was said to be it was said to be a 2019 like new condition um, I asked about slides I asked about anything mechanical that would cost over $500 I can maybe be wrong with this we honestly didn't even make it to the ACs in the refrigerator like we made it on, we before we went in the RV like I could tell we could both tell the, this RV been ridden pretty hard. We got to the back, we start checking the axles. Um, they start to bend or move over time sometimes, and that causes wear on your tires on one side, usually. And then eventually one of those two tires blows out or both or whatever, and then you have to replace the tires and you really need to get the axles fixed. Well, the first thing we noticed right away was that this did not have the right tires on it. It was supposed to have Goodyear tires like the spare tire was, but it didn't. It had cheap replacement, not even name brand tires on it. Um, and two of those tires on one side were already worn down enough where I'm like, I'm kind of iffy even getting this thing home, honestly, and especially after what we've been through. So the very first thing I'd have to do when we get this back to Tennessee is I'd have to take it somewhere and immediately start getting work done on the axles and then replacing the tires. Underneath where the main galley sink is um, in the living room slash kitchen, um, there had been a leak at some point and the underbelly had been sliced open about a six or eight foot stretch. The insulation had been removed. There was a leak on what one of the gaskets on one of the, what would you call that? The slide hydraulic ram. Just not there on it. I think if everything on the RV had been immaculate and they genuinely looked like they didn't know what was wrong with the axles, um, but that wasn't the impression I was getting. I was getting the impression, I'm not listing everything even. I, I'm, I'm getting the impression that they knew some of these things. <sighs> They, they, they just, I think they knew. Um, and they were not willing. When I started, I said, look, I gotta go back. First thing, I don't even get to enjoy this RV. I, I gotta take it into a shop and let them start working on these axles. And then we, you know, we got these other issues too. And they're like, no, we're not, I'm not, you know, I'm not budging a penny. Um, I don't care what you drove, drove or what you've done. I'm not, I'm not budging a penny off the price. If you're selling an RV and you honestly don't know about something and somebody finds it, that's fine. But I mean, if it's a safety issue, work with them, help them call, get some quotes, work out a price. Um, if you did know about the issue and you're lying about it and covering up, 
or at least be honest up front. I, I guess I just hope they'd been honest up front when I called and I asked about, hey, I did not specifically say driver's side tires on the rear side. Is there anything going on? But this guy's a car guy. Like, he knew. He knew that. I don't know. I hate to speculate, but we both feel like he knew, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we feel pretty certain he knew. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I mean, he had his own. He could have. He had welding equipment. He had everything there. How many vehicles do you think were being worked on in that garage? I think he had four race cars alone. Yeah, so he knew. So we made it back to the truck. Gonna get this tire put back on. It's been a it's been a ride, that's for sure. <sighs> Got the truck fixed, tire on. Thank goodness for kind people and good friends. We've had nothing but generosity and we'd be so lost right now um but unfortunately I got the call from Nathan and I think what was getting me through <laughs> these past couple of days is thinking it's gonna be worth it we're gonna have a a new home a new space something to be excited about and yeah he told me that that it didn't work out um so I'm just really disappointed right now because this has been this has been the adventure for sure um, I'm glad I was here with Nathan though you know I debated not coming and I would hate for him to be alone during this it wasn't the trip we had hoped for but we've learned something new we've grown as individuals we've grown together you know, we're not gonna let a good crisis go to waste right part of the journey. So I'm going to head back, pick up Nathan because he gave me the call that I don't need to, um, I don't need to drive up to New York. Like we will not be hooking a fifth wheel up to the truck today. I'm so sorry. It's a bummer. It is. It's a bummer. It's okay. We're gonna drown our sorrows. Yeah, we're gonna do a lot of we're gonna pretty like much this whole this video is just like a stress eating. <laughs> Tire back on the truck. Hopefully that'll make it back to Tennessee. We're on the road again. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're heading back without an RV. Not <laughs> not yeah, what we not expected. Not how we expected this to go. If you trust someone and you're already you're already seeing that a lot of what they're saying isn't lining up. Something's probably not right if your gut's telling you. I think he expected me and Stuart to talk about it, maybe come back with a counter, or do this or that. At that point, it's like I'm done. The trust had I'm been, been broken. The trust is broken. I said I'm done. Like he should at least made an offer to make it right or do something. He, have to, he, he told me the second time I'm not coming down a penny. I said okay. I said I just wish you told me what was wrong before we made the drive. And then we didn't say goodbye. <laughs> we didn't say anything mean. Me and Stuart turned around. We got in his truck. And as we got in the truck, we looked out and the guy heard us start the truck and he kind of looked startled and looked at us like, what's going on? Like, I think he didn't think we were gonna leave after driving. And, and I left, we left. Mm -hmm. I think that's the other big thing. You have got to be willing to walk away. You've got to be willing to walk away. Take because a, there is so much emotion. Yeah. Like, it's hard it's to hard. walk away, especially after everything we've been through. Like. We wanted to walk away with an RV today. You know, that was like what was exciting us and getting us through this difficult time was we wanted, we wanted to get home with that RV. Another tire blown. Camper in front of us just blew out their tire. So we're pulling over to see if we can help. We know exactly how that feels. <laughs> He just got called AAA, so. <sighs> it's been a lot of driving, babe. <laughs> well, it 
wasn't just right down the road, unfortunately. Yeah, 24 hours. <laughs> what, uh, so we spent the night last night with some friends um, in like the Cincinnati area. We're now in, in Kentucky. This is a multi-day deal to go here. I mean, what do you, like, I thought, you never know how you're gonna feel the next day. So I woke up today, I feel about like I did yesterday. Um, I mean, what do you think went wrong? I know what went wrong with you. <laughs> Is you said yes to coming on this road trip with me because this is not not quite what I promised. No, it's a little different than I had imagined, but I told her we'll get away, we'll have some time away from the kids, we may swing by an IKEA. IKEAs are not open. We did get away from the kids. But That's we missed the kids hard. like crazy. That's been hard too, so I'm like emotional. <laughs> oh, are you missing them? You ready to get back? Oh, man. <laughs> get back soon. <sighs> It's hard. A lot of you guys have bought a house or bought something. I think you just really look forward to it and you visualize yourself in it and you think it's a done deal. And We don't get that much, you know, with RVs. We've bought several RVs, so we don't get too mm -hmm. emotional. But we thought, I mean, yeah. we thought 2019, we were, like new condition, we said it's this is done deal. It's going to have to be really in bad shape for us to walk away. And yeah. Obviously, it wasn't close. I mean, if it was close, just a grand or two and maybe stuff wrong, but it was. I don't know if they went to Alaska multiple times in this. <laughs> so you got a combination of the wear and tear on it in that one year, and then also the sellers not being totally upfront about things either. I don't know, I, I think I have to tell myself things to sleep through the night and still see good in the world. And I know one of the things I tell myself sometimes, there's like, I mean, there's givers and there's takers. And you've got people who look out, I guess, for the interest of others, who are willing to mediate, negotiate, understand that maybe they knew about some of this stuff, maybe they didn't, but Obviously, we went out of the way. We weren't trying to lowball or talk them down. We had a check written for the full amount, ready to hand it to them. If it was like new and in the condition they said it was going to be with nothing wrong, like they told me. Um, but when I start seeing thousands here, thousands there, thousands over there, potentially, you know, it's like. It's not even that. It's like, you know, the safety of it, the convenience of yeah. it. And we'd, we'd already had a blown tire on a truck. And like these two <laughs> tires on this thing. Yeah, it can happen. Because the axles, <laughs> it's specifically, like, two tires look brand new, and then two tires were probably worn down less than 50% on the inside because of the axles. And I'm like, I, I, I don't, we saw it happen going down the road with the fifth wheel, I mean, and I've seen it. Yeah. So something with the tires, tires are a big deal with RVs. Um, it's not quite like a car, it can be dangerous like a car where you lose control and things like that, first of all, but, but secondly, when a tire blows on a car, it can cause damage to a vehicle, but when a tire blows on an RV, like, more often than not, happens all the time it's gonna cause a decent amount of damage to that RV like it'll come up and it'll start that like the one I stopped and looked at on the way back where I saw the tire blow um, it ripped you've got the it ripped the side it just sort of like peeled back the side of the RV as the tire was ripping off they couldn't he, he was just shaking his head he was so upset like couldn't open a slide um, you know the side of it was damaged I mean you're talking thousands of dollars of damage to the RV um, that that guy's gonna have to if he lives in it give up his home to get fixed tires are a big deal um, so, so look closely at the tires. If you're not going a long distance, you're going slow, maybe not a big deal. If you're going, you know, close to a thousand miles and uh, you're going to be going highway speeds and there's already some damage to the tires and something's up with the axles and not, not good. But we will, we're still pondering the whole way back. We've been thinking about what could we have done differently? What question, what is it with loud birds in our videos? Um, the whole way back, we've been thinking what questions could we have asked for this maybe to go differently? Not differently as in, I think things would have worked out. We got there, it's perfect. You know, they sold it to us. I, I don't think it ever would have worked out with these sellers, to be honest. Uh, but maybe a question where we could have poked and prodded and found out some information that wasn't being up front to us. And then we would have said, okay, we're not going to make that drive. Because <laughs> <laughs> apparently we were getting two different two different answers from one spouse versus the other. So it would have been really hard to piece that information together unfortunately but there's a lot there's a lot there's just a lot to buy in an RV and, and I want and you I know some of you've seen this and you've already said I will never buy a used RV from a private party because that was this wasn't how I imagined this video going I was gonna show the <laughs> inspection and say hey here's how you buy you just hand them the check and you drive back with the perfect RV which the the open range worked out really well it was pretty much like that yeah. like it was We've what the guy said it's what he said it was gonna be but to say this as well Things can go wrong with a dealer as well. Even brand new from a dealer, you pull Absolutely. off the lot, they can tell you you can tow what you can't, so they could, something could be wrong mm -hmm. with it that they didn't know about or didn't tell you about, and you know they could say one thing about the price and the financing for you. So all kinds of things can go wrong with anything, so don't totally write off private parties, because we've had mixed experiences. I don't know that after this, I'm like, 
forget this. I'm just taking the open range. We're pulling up to a dealer, <laughs> trading it in, and you know. We um, did say we wanted this to be a learning experience, so never, never really say that before you leave on a long trip because we yeah, definitely got a yeah. lot of learning experiences. There's plenty of learning with our being. We've learned a lot. So. One for the books. So one of the big questions we got from you guys, because I know this was kind of abrupt, is why are you changing from the open range? We've actually really loved mm -hmm. our open range. We have no issues with the build quality. Mm -hmm. It's been great for our family. But small changes just make a huge difference in a small space. And so it's more about just looking for a different layout that we think will really benefit our family in the season of life we're in right now. So next week we're going to go into way more detail on why all this is going down for you guys because I know a lot of you ask about that. But in general that's the big that's the big idea for that. Um, another thing we've been asked a lot about is what all did you find with the inspection? Now I shared a few things we found with the inspection. Um, now keep in mind this was found in 20-30 minutes of inspection. I didn't even inspect the whole RV. Uh, but if you're curious about the list of things specifically that I found in about 30 minutes um, and you want to know what those are, uh, because there was, there was more than I mentioned. I just mentioned some of the things that were kind of the deal breakers, I guess. It was a deal breaker as a whole. But if you want that list, uh, lessjunkmorejourney.com slash inspection. And so the last question is one that we brought up early in our video, which is the question of what do we wish we'd asked or what could we have done differently to maybe avoid some of this? Now, there's a lot of different questions you can ask when you're buying an RV from a private seller, but this is the one that stands out the most to us that we wish we'd done in this specific case and that question uh, which marissa probably brought to my attention more so than anything else i guess we talked about because <laughs> it was i should have that again 2019 like new i just thought it's okay i don't need to do this but we wish we had mm -hmm. uh can we send someone over to inspect the rv uh, it could be a mobile tech it could be a friend for us it could have been a patron uh or or sometimes sometimes people even have someone drop the rv off at a dealership and, and maybe we would have paid the fee to have it inspected or absolute worst case if none of those can work out or whatever just ask the seller can you facetime me walk around the rv and let's mm -hmm. look at this together um we took everything at face value we did ask a lot of questions as far as what's wrong and what's going on and what we could do once we got there if something was wrong but in this case just should have should have seen more. And that's hard to do from 12 hours away. <laughs> but we wish I wish we'd asked that. And there's a lot more questions you can ask. Mm -hmm. um, I'll have those questions as well. LessJumpMoreJourney.com slash inspection. Again, I can't, I'm not going to go through all those questions with you guys. I think we learned a lot from this experience. But I hope if nothing else, um, because you don't have total control of everything that's going to happen in your life and the decisions you make. I think if nothing else, we learned about givers and takers. And I really hope that we can be givers in what we do. We're not perfect. Sometimes we end up being takers and we don't mean to, mm -hmm. um, but there's both of those out there. Be alert, do your homework, and if you have to, pay somebody to go on site and inspect the RV <laughs> for getting the feeling that that's going on. Um, we've never had to do that before. No, I mean, no. but... We've never had, yeah, no. But, I mean, it's always a possibility, even with a, even with a new RV or a new-ish. Like new. Like new RV. <laughs> uh, uh, I like new RV with a lot of love. <laughs> a lot of adventures behind that like new RV. <laughs> um, somebody somebody had a great time in yeah. it. So, uh, but it won't be us from here on out. But, but hopefully you guys have uh, gained a little bit from this. For us, it was givers and takers. I think it's the big thing we're taking away. Um, and if you want more information about, specifically some of you I know are interested in details about inspections or maybe what we found with this RV, lessjunkmorejourney.com slash inspection. You can check that out. Uh, until next time, we'll catch you guys later.